My name is Paul Langua, and I play with the Tragically Hip. Um, so I was reading an interview <clears throat> from uh, 2017, and Glenn Marshall, speaking about Bob, he said, uh, Bob did a lot of beautiful video work for the Tragically Hip. He's a renaissance guy. So I did know that. So why don't you tell me a little bit about how you personally knew Bob, your experiences with him personally and or with the band? Uh, okay, well, um, I think we um, met Bob. Um, it may have been through his brother or it may have been through our management at the time, but um, mm -hmm. or Downey and I were living in Toronto. And um, so when we first met him, um, we went out to his cabin and just had uh, a tea, I think. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a pretty wild little place. Um, at the time, you know, I'm not sure what year it was. Well, it's we were about to do Grace too, so um, it was probably '95. Um, he hadn't; it uh, wasn't up and running as a studio yet. Um, just a teeny little cabin, and he did have like instruments around and stuff. So maybe he had been recording, but it kind of wasn't like an official right. studio. Um, yeah, I liked him. He was a very uh, unique person. He had ideas and he wanted to we have a studio mm -hmm. called the bathhouse and he wanted to do the video down there with us okay. in our our recording environment and, um so he came down to bath and everyone met him and um uh, my memory would be it was a couple of days um and it's a residential studio so he would have stayed over and um mm -hmm. the rest of us would have too and yeah he was kind of playing with um pretty artsy guy you know i mean he, he knew what he was doing he was playing with a lot of shadows and lights and you know it was pretty um ethereal um atmospheric sort of treatment of mm -hmm. uh grace too if you've ever seen the video it's uh, I have. Yeah. yeah so it kind of speaks for himself just to, that that he did have a uh a sense of uh certainly artistic style but also um like abstract uh ish treatment mm -hmm. of uh of that song and so um yeah we all took to him and uh liked him he's easy to talk to and um and um yeah so we decided to do our next video with him which was uh, greasy jungle and that was mm -hmm. done more at his cabin and i would say less artsy uh yeah. whole different sort of uh all game like sort of through the brush and you know it's um a little, little kind of overexposed uh yeah kind of treatment um so i would have gone there uh one other time to discuss greasy jungle with gord and bob but then gord downey ended up um visiting with them like here and there because he was mm -hmm. in toronto and and bob just outside of Burlington and um and uh yeah so he was uh we all we all liked him and, and working with him was a good experience. And then uh, Gord uh, ended up uh, to see him here and there over the years. Yeah. And that's one of the things that Margo told me about his partner is that uh, Gord had been to the shack a number of times. And also after his car, after his motorcycle accident, uh, Gord would go to visit him in, uh, in his recovery quite often, which is great. I didn't know that they were such good friends, which is really nice. Yeah. You know, Gord, very loyal person. Um, uh, with any friend that he has. And um, mm -hmm. so he, Gord was just like that. He, he would uh, certainly, if, if uh, someone's in recovery after an accident, um, that doesn't surprise me at all. I didn't know that, but it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. It was very nice. And uh, Margo actually suggested that I try to get in touch with, uh, with Gord's widow and, and talk to her, but it's, it's been tough getting a hold of her. So and I don't really want to, Push my luck <laughs> with, mm. and get involved with too many people here. Um, yeah. So, and so in terms of uh, Bob's sort of creative vision, you think that at that time through Gracie Jungle, Grace Two, uh, and, and working with you guys on the day for night uh, stage graphics, he probably added quite a bit of value to your sort of creative vision, look and feel of the band's graphics at the time. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, I would say so, and um, you know he came in with that stuff and, and, um, 
rendered those treatments, um, you know, of himself. They, they were kind of his artistic uh, decisions. Um, mm -hmm. We liked it. And so it just only made sense to ask him if he wanted to help with uh, some images for the tour because both those songs right. are on day for night. And um, yeah. so, yeah. And then, you know, through, cause we had uh, recorded uh, road apples in say 1990 at uh, Dan Lanois studio in new Orleans. And then mm -hmm. day for night we went back to, um, to that studio Kingsway studio. Um, so it kind of made, total sense that um we were working with his brother and um and uh yeah so uh he would have you know the technology back then for day for night um we might have been just beyond a projector but it was pretty much you know, it's not like the the stuff available these days for, <laughs> yeah, for tours and stuff but um yeah i remember it um working out nicely and we were all happy about it and i think he was too Good. And, and so I, I'm going to keep this short, uh, Paul. And th again, thanks for your time. Um, I have two questions that I'm asking people, and I can let you pick which one you want to answer. Uh, question number one is, you know, what is your lasting memory of Bob? And, and, you know, what impression did he leave on you? The second one is, do you have any thoughts on what Bob's lasting impression might be on Canadian music or music in general? Well, I might, because I don't really know on the second one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I might choose the first question. Sure. Sounds good. Um, if you don't mind asking again, just, just so I, I know what the exact yeah. question is. No problem. So, so uh, Paul, if you can tell me, um, what, what, is, uh, what is kind of the lasting impression that, that Bob Lanois has left on you as an artist, as a friend, working with you, working with the band, working with you personally, what's your lasting impression of uh that bob left on you well um you know i remember bob as a uh you know a nice guy a very um unique uh dare i say hippie-ish uh <laughs> sort of fella he reminded me of a lot of my uncles um and uh quite thoughtful uh quite easy to talk to conversationalists and um yeah, and he had his uh, obviously he lives in a cabin kind of <laughs> in the woods and um he had his own way um of living and and uh you know marched to his own beat but he obviously had talent um you know he was one of the more unique video directors we ever worked with and um we knew he was up to something but we didn't really know until he delivered the final versions of these videos, um, yeah. exactly what he was going to come up with. And um, so we just had confidence in him. And so I remember him as a, as a guy that knew what he was doing. And you could tell there was a lot of thoughts going in there. That's perfect. Paul, that's all I need from you. Just a, a quick 10, 15 minutes of your time. So uh, thanks so much. When this is done, I'll send it your way. If okay. you are so inclined, your people go right ahead. If not, I understand that too. But thanks so much for your time. And uh, it's been great talking to you. Yeah, pleasure talking to you, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. For me. Okay. All right. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.